Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I'm Carl Stevens, Dean of the College of Engineering and Computer Science, and it's my pleasure to welcome all of you here today for our ribbon cutting event on this spectacular facility that you see here before us. Um, we have many distinguished guests here today, but I would like to say that on this day, at this time, at this place, we consider each and every one of you VIPs. But there are some individuals that I would like to recognize and some groups. And so if you would wave or, or stand, uh, Representative Bill Hager is here. <laughs> Representative Lori Berman. <laughs> Mayor Susan Welchel. <laughs> and Boca Deputy Mayor Susan Haney. And could I also ask you to stand or uh, a show of hands of all of our other uh, city council members, um, state and political leaders and supporters? Okay, that works, that works. How about all of our students and faculty and staff and alumni and their family members? <clears throat> members of the University Board of Trustees, Foundation Board, and University Administration. <clears throat> members of our College Executive Advisory Council. <clears throat> and our numerous other friends and colleagues from across the university, from sister institutions, and from the community. We are really, really delighted to have you here with us. We also have two important professional groups that are, are meeting here today, and I would like to uh, recognize them and, and perhaps some of them are here, or may, perhaps they're still undergoing their meeting. Uh, we have here today a meeting of the Latin American and Co Caribbean Consortium for Engineering Institutions, or LASEI for short. Uh, they have here about 40 representatives from the Organization of American States, the Florida Endowment Fund, and <clears throat> educators and government officials from some nine countries. And my counterpart, uh, the Dean of Engineering at uh, Florida International U University. Are you here? Anyone here? Thank you very much. <clears throat> we also have meeting, and I know they're in the middle of their business meeting, and I can't imagine why they would favor that over my comments, but we'll talk about that later. <clears throat> um, the Florida Energy and Climate Change Commission also is meeting here today, and they have come from the Renewable Ocean Energy and the Marine Environment meeting in Palm Beach that's been running since Wednesday that was organized and hosted by our Center for Ocean Energy Technology. And a number of you probably know that the U.S. Department of Energy recently designated our center as a national laboratory, the Southeast National Marine Renewable Energy Center. And this is one of three such labs in the country. And in honor of these, uh, of these accomplishments, Governor Crist has designated this as the week of uh, ocean is designated this is Ocean Renewable Energy Week in Florida. Now, surely Walt Disney must have had a day like this in mind when he said, all of our dreams can come true if we have the courage to pursue them. But what we have here is not just a dream. We have an amalgamation of the dreams of many, many people. And I would just like to mention those briefly. First of all is the dream of our college to create some really great staff, uh, great space for our students and faculty and staff to create a living learning laboratory and showcase for uh, green sustainable building practices. Uh, the university's dream to promote the culture of sustainability through its Mission Green campaign. The dream of the university architect to set a new standard for architecture on this campus and the dreams of our architects, engineers, consultants, and construction manager to do something that had never been done before and which many had said could not be done here in Southeast Florida. And that was to design and build 
a major academic facility that would qualify for platinum level LEED certification. And this is the very highest level in the U.S. Green Building Council rating system. And I'll mention just a, bit, a little bit later what that actually means. And of course the dreams of the university to have uh, food service, an outstanding food service on this end of campus, and also a home for the Florida Atlantic University Faculty and Staff Club. And just wait until you take your turn and you see what these people have accomplished. So just what does it mean to say that the building is constructed to the standards of platinum level LEED certification? It means it's light, it's bright, it's quiet, it's healthy, there are no materials that outgas nasty things that affect your health, it's highly energy efficient, and is considerate of the environment. And one of the requirements was to restore national habitat, and you probably have observed here our, uh, our many Everglades that's been constructed here as part of this project. And so far we have, uh, we have two ducks, an egret, and several raccoons that have found home here already, so I, I guess this is working. <coughs> Yeah. Uh, alligators come a little later, okay? And in fact, on this day here on the FAU campus, no gators allowed, okay? <laughs> I'll probably have to retract that because I met several gentlemen from the U of F here. So, so anyway, we'll be, uh, we'll be doing tours a bit later, but I wanted to uh, just point out a few highlights of the building that may not be obvious uh, as, you, as you go through it. Uh, this building is 97,000 square feet, and 10% of this space is dedicated to students. And just inside the door is our student study center, and we had a meeting with the students, um, I guess it was Wednesday, to talk about the rules by which we're gonna manage and operate and maintain that space. And one of their very strong requirements was no faculty allowed. And so we said, well, what if you want somebody to help you with a question? And they said, well, if we need that, we'll invite them to come in. This is also home to our computer and our electrical engineering programs and our computer science program. All of our student support services are here, and that includes uh, we provide free tutoring for all of our students, um, and that service is here. So, um, and we have an, an engineering innovation suite, an innovation laboratory. Our innovation honors program uh, is headquartered here. I mentioned uh, LASE, the Latin American Con Caribbean Consortium for Engineering Institutions. Uh, we have the Southeast National Marine Renewable Energy Center also housed here, which I had mentioned. We are also pleased to host the South Florida chapter of the U.S. Green Building Council. They have an office here in this building. And of course, all of our uh, administrative colleagues, administrative offices are here. Up on the fourth floor, uh, we will have a really world-class uh, wireless networks laboratory. And this is thanks to the gift of our distinguished alum, Mr. Jay Salkani. And Jay, I see you here in the audience. Um, we're pleased to have you here. Through his company, <clears throat> Through his company, t -Core Networks, uh, Jay has made a generous gift of well over a million dollars to establish the t -Core Networks Wireless Lab um, in this building. And he tells me this is, will be the only one of its, uh, of its kind at a university in the U.S. And I know a number of his people have been busy here all week setting up equipment, and I don't know whether everything's set up yet or not, but uh, uh, Jay, thank you so much. We really appreciate your support for our college. The building also has a, a, a robust sensor and data collection and management system, and I think you will see a sample of this in the lobby, and, and there were many uh, participants uh, that worked to bring this system together, but the heart of this uh, is a system from ILS technology right here in Boca Raton, and we have that through major gifts in kind from ILS and Mr. Fred Yuntz, who is their president and CEO. Fred, I know you're here. We park, we park together. <clears throat> and Fred is also uh, president of our, um, of our executive advisory council for the college. This will provide, this system will provide online 
uh, information about the building performance. And we can use this for teaching, we can use this um, for research, uh, we can use this for building management purposes, and, and even, even the minimum things we have going up now, we have incredible information about this building. And it turns out you build buildings, but you really don't have that much data about how these things perform. And we will have that. We'll have that in spades. So Fred, thank you so much for all of your help. Work toward this day began eight years ago in 2002. And we couldn't have gotten to where we are here today without the caring input and attention to detail of many different groups and individuals. And time would not permit me to try to mention all of you by name, and I probably would forget a few. Um, but let me, let me just mention a few that have been particularly helpful. We certainly want to thank the university administration and staff for their unwavering support uh, throughout this project. Uh, there was a time early on when the architect got a little bit concerned when we told him, no, we want platinum level green. And at universities, usually the, the maximum is we need the maximum amount of square footage. And so they got a little worried that we might get cold feet partway through this uh, project. And so they wanted to uh, confirm that, yes, indeed, we wanted to do this. And I didn't know this. Uh, and they actually met with President Brogan, then President Brogan. And I didn't know until later when he told me when we were robing for graduation that they asked him, do you really honestly want to do this? And he told me that his reply is, gentlemen, you don't go to the Olympics with the idea of winning bronze. Mm -hmm. We certainly need to thank all of our architects, engineers, consultants, and there's some amazing engineering in this building. I hope you get a chance to see it here. Our landscapers, all of our trades and craftsmen, our, our construction manager, and all of our equipment and furniture vendors. There's an amazing amount of detail here, and we thank all of you for being such great partners for this project. Also I want to acknowledge the sponsors of this ribbon cutting event, and they are listed uh, in your program. Thank you, thank you so very much. And on a personal note, I would like to recognize the outstanding efforts and support certainly of all the dean's office staff and all of our faculty and students who work so hard to bring this about. Uh, in particular, I'd like to thank my executive assistant, Colleen Glazer. Colleen, I know you're here someplace. Um, <laughs> Colleen kept me fortified with coffee and um, kept me reasonably on track uh, for a number of years. Uh, Jill Rowan, Jill, I believe you're here also. Um, Jill is our Director of Operations, which means money, and she did a great job of keeping us on track while I was distracted with all this building stuff. One of the really important uh, roles and one of the things that I think made this project was so successful was the very close liaison that we tried to have between the college and the dean's office and all of the rest of the construction team and the faculty and, and the students on the one side and, and the people on the other. And when we started out, uh, Mr. Tim Van Epps. Tim, are you here? Mm -hmm. um, Tim is director of our Innovation uh, Leadership Honors Program, and he took on the task of, of uh, handling this liaison job. And, and this was a, a really a timely event, because at this time when we were trying to convince the faculty that maybe they should have offices with glass walls, and that didn't go over really well. <coughs> uh, later on, we had another person that came in uh, to this activity, and, and that's Brenda Cotto. Uh, she's our Director of Technology and Innovation, and she's been with the project a long, long time. In fact, she and I had conversations back at the very, very beginning about whether or not we should do a green building or not, and she's followed this through all the way through the selection of, of furniture. So Brenda, a very special thanks to you, and we actually have a token of our appreciation for you. So. Thank you, thank you so very much. You know, when we began to work on this project, we realized that we would be about as far away from the university amenities, which are all way over there, uh, as we could be. And that suggested that we would have to have some vending machines. And I, I have to tell you, I just found that really pretty repulsive. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, we were going to do this great building, and we'd have to have some vending machines. And then one day I overheard a conversation, and I heard a person mention that uh, Dennis Crudell 
and the university actually had been looking for some space over in this side of campus for uh, a, a food facility of some sort. And so I jumped on the phone and I called Dennis up and I said, Dennis, I hear such and such. And he said, yeah, that's right. Well, to make a long story short, uh, the rest of it is history. And Dennis, you want to come up and tell us what you got here and what, what the people are going to see? <clears throat> Thank you all very much. First, I'd like to uh, recognize we had a uh, trustee show up. Uh, Armin Grossman is in the crowd with us, if we could give him a hand. <laughs> Late as usual, but good to see you. <laughs> Hello, my name's Dennis Crudell. I'm the Senior Vice President for Financial Affairs and the CFO here at FAU. And on behalf of Financial Affairs and Business Services, I'd like to welcome you to this great day. And Carl, thank you for ordering this weather. It couldn't have been any better. Carl asked me to talk a little bit about this, and, and he's right. He came to us and said, would you like to do that? And I think uh, Stacy Volnick and my office and myself were in his office in about four minutes because we wanted to have the opportunity and give him some of the uh, vision that we also had for what we thought we could do to assist with this building. This is going to be a faculty staff club on, on the second floor uh, with nine, and a total of 9,000 square feet in the food service venue of this facility. And in addition, when we found out that the College of Engineering was looking for a LEED certified at the highest level, we then went out and got a partner that was also LEED certified and in fact has been certified until 2014 as a green certified uh, vendor. So that, that's going to really help us to do that and we really do appreciate the fact that we were able to come into the facility and, and uh, comport with, with uh, the wishes of the dean. The faculty staff club is here to foster tradition and collegial exchange. This facility is strategically located here in this building, although some people might not think that it's all that strategically located. But this facility will really help to foster that, and it will also have the ability to have uh, private venues as well to make sure that we do have that, uh, that uh, collegial effort. When designing the space, we wanted this location on campus to be unlike no other. As we conceptualized the new space, we wanted environmental efforts and standards of the College of Engineering building to be reflected in this dining venue. And we have been successful in that. We will meet LEED certification for commercial uh, enterprises and interiors. The location will serve our faculty, students, staff, alumni, and friends of this community, I believe, very well. The space can be reserved for university events and private functions as well and will bring people onto our campus and give them an opportunity to look at how this campus has grown and how important this facility is to our new stable of buildings. The first floor location consists of the green certified chicken grill, as I had mentioned earlier, and the beautiful patio area outside of the pond will also be able to accommodate another 50 to 75 people during days like this. There are many folks who assisted in this uh, endeavor, and I would like to just take a, a minute to thank a few people. First, I'd like to thank Dean, Dean Stevens for sharing his vision of the college and encouraging uh, this partnership at every turn. Uh, Stacy Volnick, my assistant VP for uh, Financial Affairs, and Richard Yu, who kept me on track uh, to make sure that we made the kind of certification process that we were doing. Emilio Lobello, is Emilio here? Ah, there he is. Emilio is the Vice President of Gallo, Herbert, and Lobello Architects and taking this vision uh, to a height that was, is unbelievable and we thank you for that vision of yours. Uh, Henry Kraft, uh, Henry Kraft is there. Henry is in our facilities uh, planning department who guided this facility and it's a, an amazing job. And uh, Christian Guerrier from Cummings, is he here? He kept us all on track and made sure that the hard hats were on every time we were in this building. We are in this building plenty of times. So what I'd like to do is just say thank you for the opportunity, Dean, to come over. You're going to see an amazing facility. It's something that we've needed to add to the stable of our uh, um, food venues for a long time, and we're very, very excited about being here on campus. Dean?
Th thank you, Dennis. And um, I actually had the, the uh, FAU trustees on my list of people to recognize, and I guess I skipped over that. So um, I may be coming down and asking you for a job as major D of that faculty club <laughs> that you had down there. <clears throat> One of the uh, really amazing stories of this building uh, is serendipity. Uh, it's just been amazing how things have, have, have come together. And I just really have to wonder how clever was it of the universe to time the completion of, the, of this building with its emphasis on students and student space with the arrival on this campus of our sixth FAU president, Dr. Mary Jane Saunders, with her emphasis on student success. Dr. Saunders. <laughs> I keep saying it, but one day we've got to invest in a handrail. <laughs> Thank you all for coming out today. What a wonderful day to be here and a wonderful thing to celebrate, this gorgeous new building that recognizes the importance of the College of Engineering and Computer Science to the Florida Atlantic University family. Um, it's, it's a terrific um, recognition on Frank Brogan's part. Uh, we need to give Frank full credit for being the president who said, let's move this to the top of the building list. Let's make this a priority for the university. Let's build a building we can all be proud of. Let's build a building that speaks as a building to just what we're doing educationally inside that building. We have the best board of trustees in the world. They're supportive of all the educational uh, projects. Uh, presented to them, and we thank Armin for recognizing uh, the board today. We really do appreciate all that you do for students. And one good thing for this building that I don't think has been mentioned already is that it came in under cost. And as a president, that's really important. And I want you to know that what came in under cost got reinvested in the engineering college in the other buildings of engineering and uh, we can thank our administrative team for recognizing that when you have things like this, this is w what is important to us and uh, that's what we need to do with the funds that we have, invested in our students, invested in our faculty, invest in our academic programs. I have to tell you that I love this building. <laughs> it, I'm not going to talk long because if you haven't been through it, it is one of the most exciting buildings I've ever been in, public or private. And to think that our students are going to have the opportunity to study and learn in this building is really a point of pride for me. I think I led about five tours of this in various stages of construction. I'm excited about the commitment to uh, recycled materials, to sustainability, to natural light, to using um, efficient energy sources to very clever things like reusing the arena floor left over after a hurricane for the conference center. I mean, it's just full of details like that that intrigue you. It's also wonderful to have our first faculty and staff club as part of this building. And again, I think that's a recognition of our community, our sense of community that we're building at this university that will have a place for faculty and staff and apparently invited students to uh, come to. And I suggest to the students that they do invite the faculty in to help them with their studies, that that would be a, a good thing to do. I won't talk any longer. I thank you all for coming here today. I know you're going to want to go through this building. I know you'll be as excited as I am about the opportunities it presents, about the statement it makes, about this iconic building right at the, right at the front part of our campus. Thank you all for coming today, and thank you for being so supportive of this wonderful university. Thank you very much. Thank you so very much, President Saunders, and we really appreciate all your support for what we are trying to do here. You probably uh, noticed um, in my remarks quite a bit of emphasis on innovation and entrepreneurship and leadership, and this holds true throughout our college. And there is no stronger advocate of this approach in this state than Florida Senator Jeremy Ring, who is with us here today. Jeremy? <clears throat>
Thank you. And thank you, President Saunders, very much. It's wonderful to see you. Um, I'm coughing here a little bit. I shook a thousand hands on Tuesday. I think I had the only Democratic victory party in the state. Um, kind of, kind of seemed to me that the last election was uh, kind of watching it. It seemed like you had one group that wanted to take us back to the 20th century, going up against another group that wanted to take us back to the 19th century. Um, but it's great to be here with a group that wants to take us to the 21st century, because this is what this is about. And uh, we don't always um, we don't always get right the future in Tallahassee. But I'm not always sure we have to, quite frankly, because I'm not sure the future and the 21st century and a new economic paradigm in the state is really going to ever emanate from Tallahassee. It starts at the universities. This is what it's about. This is the engine. This is the engine, and this is the driver. You know, when I moved, my background, for those of you that don't know, is I was one of the original people that worked at Yahoo and helped build that company up over uh, uh, its first six years. And everything that we did out in Silicon Valley, um, it's all, we had one commonality in that we all were emanating out of the university system. I mean, you look at the businesses in this country, whether it's Yahoo or Google or uh, Microsoft started by uh, Bill Gates when he was at college and Apple started with Steve uh, Jobs when he was 22 years old and Michael Dell building computers um, when he was 21 years old at the University of Texas, um, you know, Facebook, Napster, I mean, where does great, you know, where does innovation come out of? It comes out of the university system. You know, I get asked all the time, all the time, um, what, how are we going to get out of this, um, how are we going to get out of this recession? How are we going to get jobs back? And I give the answer all the time. The only one way to get back out of this doldrum we're in, and that's to innovate our way out. And that's what history tells us. History tells us we get out of recession by innovating our way out. And history also tells us where innovation happens. It happens at universities. This is it. The next great business in this country is in the head of a 20-year-old student right now. You know, We don't know what the next great company is right now but the next greatest companies in the next five years are just starting today. They're just starting, and they're starting in places like this. That's how important this is. This isn't just about, you know, building a nice engineering school. This is so much bigger than this. This is about helping this nation, you know, enter into the, a 21st century economy. And that's what history tells us schools like this do. And I'm very happy, um, thrilled actually, that there's such a good combination here with the engineering program and the business program. Because they have to work in sync. They have to work together. Uh, you need the business talent and you need the engineering talent. And it's not just about what goes on in here. It's about recruiting the capital that can only be recruited into universities. It's not just about innovating. It's about commercialization that has to go here. We want jobs in this state. You're going to create jobs by what's invented here. That's how we're going to do it. It's not Tallahassee that's going to save our state. It's FAU in the School of Engineering, in the School of Business, that's ultimately going to save our state. So I get really excited. I get thrilled um, when I have the opportunity to come and speak at universities and, 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 and speak specifically um, at an opportunity at an opportunity like this. I mean, 10 years from now, it's going to be fun to look back and to see what was created here, to see the number of jobs that came out of what was uh, innovated uh, in this building. That's what I'm looking forward to. And that's the only way, only way, that we're ever going to get out of this recessionary period. It's this building right here. It's the faculty um, and that, that you've been so done such a wonderful job recruiting. It's the students that come here because of the faculty, because of the resources, because of the community. It all works together. Ultimately, the capital is going to follow. And when that happens, this is going to be the center point 
for a new 21st century economy for all of South Florida. So I'm thrilled to be here today. It really does mean a lot. I'm kind of dying I'm so sick here, but I wasn't going to stay away from an opportunity to, uh, to be at a new engineering building. This is a big deal, and, and, and I want other people across the state to recognize um, just, just how significant uh, this is. And even if they don't, well, that's okay because uh, you need, right now, believe it or not, they need you a lot more than you need them. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Senator Ring, for your very insightful comments. We, we appreciate that. Now, the only thing that remains between you and the ribbon cutting ceremony, which will happen right over here, and the reception, which will happen down at the other end of the building, and the tours, which will also shape up right inside these doors here, is for me to say thank you so very, very much to all of you for coming out today. It's really a privilege. I, I hear that you're some 300 in numbers, which is, is stunning. Thank you.